In my opinion, she is a pioneer. She is a trailblazer for women's MMA. It has been an incredible run for her. And so with the announcement that this next fight is going to be her last, I thought it would be a lot of fun to have Roxanne Modafferi, AKA the happy warrior on the program. And so without further ado, let us say hello to the happy warrior herself, Roxanne Modafferi. Roxanne, how are you? Hi, I'm really excited to be on your show again. Thank oh, you. it's great. And by the way, yeah. yeah, after all these years, I still got it, Roxanne. I still have it signed Woo-hoo. by you. This has followed me to a lot of different studios and places. And it's one of my favorite little, uh, you know, memorabilia thingies on the set. So thank you very much, as always, for this. Um, so you announced, we found out first about the fight, and then you announced shortly thereafter, this will be your retirement fight. Why Why now? Why did you make this announcement? Well, a few fights ago, I decided that I really, really wanted at least 50 fights. So I was like, all right, I'm going to at least do that and then see what happens. And then um, over the course of, like, the last year or so, um, yeah. Later. <laughs> Sorry, someone's talking to me. Um, over the course of the year, I felt like punches and blows to the head in training were affecting me more than it used to. Um, like when I tried to push through it, I got like a headache afterwards and I was like, no, we can't have that. Like my brain health is really important. So like I started wearing headgear. Uh, I'm good in a fight, you know, just like I just, I realized like, all right, I'm getting up there with my mileage. Like now's probably a good time. Like, I don't want to start having any concussion symptoms. Like I want to stop, stop before that starts happening. Cause I've heard of some people like even before they turned pro had to retire. So I just want to be super careful with my brain health and um, reaching 50 seems like a really good, uh, a really good achievement for me. So will this, cause I've seen uh, differing numbers in your mind. This, is this your 50th fight? So if you count the ultimate fighter, uh, yes. If you count the ultimate fighter, no. which they say are like exhibition matches, it's number 45. Hogwash. I count the ultimate fighter. Are you counting the ultimate fighter? Thank you. Yes. Thank I mean, you. it's a real fight for God's sakes. It wasn't a, a dance. It's a real fight. Yeah. So in your mind, this is number 50. Yeah. Okay. And how did you feel about the opponent? I mean, Casey O'Neill is a, is a rock star right now. She's rising up. Uh, did you like her as the opponent for your retirement fight? Uh, honestly, I say yes to everybody, so I didn't really care. I was excited at first, and now there's stuff where, like, she's training with one of my friends and, like, oh, no. just little detail stuff that really sucks. So now I'm like, all right, I just want to friggin' fight her and get this over with. <laughs> but, um, you know, she's as good as anybody, and she better be careful because everything I've ever wanted to do in a fight and haven't tried yet, I'm going to try on her. Oh, so. my gosh. Like what? You guys like, better in. Can you give us a hint? I mean, flying, spinning, rolling, magic, you know, Kamehameha, I don't know. You imagine. You're just emptying the closet. Everything that's been in there. Yeah, why not? YOLO. Yeah. I'm changing up my training a little bit. Like, I'm trying some stuff. It's, I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to look forward to this. <laughs> but what, 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 when you emphasize trying, what do you mean? Like, do you, th- you feel like you're kind of mentally done and, and this last training camp is going to be a bit of a chore? Um, not really. I'm just like, like I said, with, um, I tried to reduce my sparring days just to save wear and tear on my brain. Um, and then like my class schedule got all switched around and I'm wearing headgear and people take advantage of that, like holding my head with the headgear on and I can't pull it out. So like, I don't know, it's whatever I'm gonna, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm I'm determined. I had a really good session today. Um, the power, I feel the power in my punches. Yes. So I'm really hard. It's going to be good. I'm doing a lot of strength conditioning. My trainer Lorenzo is awesome. It's going to be great. By the way, uh, who's this Benedict Arnold friend that's now training with Casey O'Neill? Let's, uh, Let's out this person. Who, who is it? Oh, no. No, we're not going to do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and you guys are both in Las Vegas, right? Have you ever trained with Casey? I mean, she hasn't been there too long, but have you ever trained with her? You haven't crossed paths, right? Uh, I have not trained with her, no. Okay. Have you watched her? I was, like, I was actually going to go help. Like, Nisha invited me to, to train once for her fight and then the fight got set with Casey. I was like, Oh crap. Like I can't go train with her. Like I really, you know, Misha just finally came back from retirement and I was like, yeah, let's go train together. I was like, Oh, just kidding. Like, yeah. So, um, that sucked. I spoke to her briefly recently and, and she was talking about how, you know, like 
she's going to retire you and all this stuff. Is there is there some trash talk there that you don't like? Is there some words being said that have rubbed you the wrong way? Uh, wait, say that again. He said what? Uh, the tra- are, are you at all bothered by any things that she has said about you and this retirement? What has she said? Well, you know, I spoke to her recently and she was like, oh, you know, um, something to the effect, I'm paraphrasing here, you know, I will retire, I will retire her and all this stuff and, you know, the typical stuff. But I wasn't sure if any of that rubbed you the wrong way. She absolutely should be saying stuff like that okay. for publicity. If she try to retire me, you know, I'm going to retire anyway, but yeah. I want to knock her out. So okay. I'll take that. <laughs> um, when you look back uh, on your career, 50 fights, right? In my opinion, you are right. 50 pro fight, like. Have you exceeded your own expectations? Did you think that you would last this long or has this kind of blown your mind? I've totally exceeded my expectations. Like when I first started, everyone was well broken by like 32. So I figured maybe my mid thirties latest I would be retiring. And now I just turned 39. Also, I never expected to fight for the belt. Like my main, my life goal was to fight in the UFC. So I'm fighting in the UFC, like I think this uh, 11 times already, Yeah, you know, that's so cool. So like fighting for the belt was like kind of a bonus. It sucks that I didn't, I didn't get it, but I had that experience. So that was awesome. Yeah. And you, uh, I remember there was a period when you were in Japan and you were teaching and you were kind of trying to figure out your next step. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. You don't leave Japan. You don't come to Las Vegas. Maybe this, this extra last chapter, perhaps the most rewarding chapter of your career never happens, right? Do you ever think about that? What if I would have stayed? What would I be doing? Where would I be? Do you do you think of that sliding doors moment in your life? Yeah, man. If I hadn't beaten Valerie Letourneau on Tough 18, you know, I would have gone back to Japan, probably been frustrated at my job, but stayed there. My body would have felt broken. Like I never would have met Lorenzo. He fixed my back. Like so many things. Your never fr- would have met my boyfriend. My love of my life. Oh my gosh! Well, I mean, everything's coming up, Roxy. At this point, are we are we getting married? Like uh, like John Wood and uh, Joanne? Are you guys going to get married as well? Is uh, is re- are re- wedding bells in the future for you, Roxy? That's the plan. Woo! That's the plan. Meaning, like, are we trying to put pressure on him? Does he have to, you know, hurry up? What are we saying here? Uh, he said he has some some plan. Okay. So I'm waiting. For- <laughs> does he does he fight as well? Yes. He does. Oh, pro fighter. Yes. Do you, uh, are you able to say his name? Do you want to say his name? Do we know him? Does he fight? Uh, sure. Chris Chris Roman. He's fighting in Titan FC, I think, uh, in December. Oh, nice. Well, th- how long have you guys been together? Um, we had our one year anniversary, but we actually knew each other like in the gym. But he, I didn't really notice because I was so focused, and he didn't <laughs> ask me out. So like, we just trained alongside each other for a bit. And then he finally funny. he finally mustered up the courage. Well, I, I found him on a dating app and I'm like, wait, I know this guy. Oh, wow. And then I was like, Hey, are you on a dating app? He's like, yeah, you want to go out? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. Um, your debut Roxy smack girl, third season, seven, November 10th, 2003. That was your debut. Hikaru Shin Ohara. Could you tell like, what was the scene there for your MMA debut back in 2003 in Tokyo, Japan? Do you remember, what do you remember from that? I remember being nervous and surprised that I was ready because I had told my sensei, like, someday I would like to fight. He's like, how about next month? And I was like, oh, <laughs> like he didn't even know me. He just was like, oh, a foreigner who wants to fight. Let's throw her in there. Um, so I got the fight and I was so nervous. I was like, am I going to become like a monster? Like, is the fire going to billow up inside of me and my soul? Like, I didn't know what to expect. So I like, my walkout music was this like heavy metal, like da, 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 da. And then, then after I won, I was like, I think I'm me. I think I'm the same person. Like, it was funny. You loved it, though. <laughs> you knew right then and there this is yeah. what you wanted to do. Actually, I knew after three fights. I told myself, do three fights, then commit yourself. Interesting. You know? Okay. And, uh, and, then and I watched my parents after three fights. <laughs> wait, they didn't know? They, oh, well, I told them I was competing, and they assumed the jujitsu. I didn't really specify. Okay. So then after the third fight, like, okay, by the way, we're hitting each other. Now, when you lost your first fight, what did that do to you? Your fir- you lost your first fight in your sixth pro fight. Uh, that was in uh, 2004, December 19, 2004. Did that deter you at all? Did you lose? Co- you know, when you start five and zero, you're feeling good. You're probably thinking, "I'm never going to lose a fight. I'm undefeated forever here at this point." What happened after you lost your first fight? Um, I was disappointed and a little confused, but I didn't feel deterred at all. Like I was just excited to be in the game and I was, I'm probably hurt more emotionally now by losses than I was back then. Really? What? I was just like, what are you going? 
Why do you think that is? Um, probably because I, I, like, I know that I did everything I possibly could to do my best and I still wasn't enough, you know, after all this time, that sort of thing. Of all the losses? You no, know, I know I'm not. Yeah, no, but huh? you, I was just curious, like, which one affected you the most? Um, probably Laura, De, the losses to, in my whole career. Yeah. Like Laura to August, cause she was my rival since I debuted. I really wanted to beat her. Could not. Hashi, um, in Japan, cause she was my training partner, my rival. I really wanted to beat her. And then, um, Viviani Araujo because Abu Dhabi really sucked and it was just a horrible experience. <laughs> why, why did it suck? <laughs> Just the quarantine. Um, we couldn't leave our rooms. Um, just like the time difference. And then I couldn't catch her. Like she just, just barely out of my reach. And I don't know, just other stuff. Now, um, Laura de August, she was your second pro loss. Why was she a rival? What didn't you uh, not like about her? We, we competed against each other in the Naga grappling tournaments. Uh -huh. So she was a fellow grappler and she, and she was like, I'm going to fight MMA. And I think she was the first live female fight that I ever saw. I think it was a uh, reality fighting in New Jersey. I was like working the table at the, at the event. Um, when I saw her fight, I was like, wow, like I fight her in grappling. I should do, I can do MMA. Like I want to fight her in MMA. So that was part of what actually inspired me to start doing MMA is seeing her, you know, my grappling rival in the tournaments do, do MMA. So for years that built up and I was like, I want to fight her in MMA someday now. Of all the victories, which one means the most to you? Uh, probably Valerie Letourneau because that changed my life on The Ultimate Fighter. And then um, Barb Honchak, I think when I beat her, at, it was my rematch because the loss, my former loss had been hanging over me for seven years and she was such a monster in my, in my mind that, that I was able to finish her. That was such a cool achievement for me. Um, was there ever a moment where, you know, like you're in the UFC, maybe it was the first one. I remember your first uh, UFC fight, like where you're like, I can't believe, like, have you allowed yourself to smell the flowers, to, to enjoy the journey, to enjoy how far you've come? Or do you feel like you've been so focused on the career and everything to where you only really appreciate how far, the 18 years in this sport, the 50 fights, once it's all said and done? I try to smell the flowers every day. Okay. I try to be appreciative. And I, I like having pictures up just to remind me of the things that I've done, you know? So... I wish that I could enjoy the moments under stress though. Like when I walk out or when Bruce Buffer announces my name, like that's so cool, but I'm always like so stressed that I can't enjoy those moments so much during them. But I like watching the tape afterwards, you know? When people like myself call you a pioneer trailblazer, because you are, you're one of the very first, you know, women's MMA fighters, certainly one of the most successful ones and the longevity speaks for itself. Are you comfortable with those titles? Um, now I am because I've been fighting for so long. Like it used to be weird, like a decade ago when people were calling me a tribblazer. I'm like, not really. There was Debbie Purcell. There were, and I could name like a bunch more, but now like I am one of the last ones. So I feel cool and honored to be called that. Yeah. It's an incredible thing to still be doing this after all these years. And so what do you think you'll do? Do you know, I know you teach, right? You teach at syndicate. Um, is that, is that the next step for you? You want to just focus on teaching kids martial arts? Um, I have a tentative plan and I cannot reveal it. At oh this my. Time. Okay. Really? Does it involve martial arts? Yes. Okay. Uh, does it involve teaching martial arts? I can't tell you. All right. Fair enough. But you know what you want to do and you're set up for it. Maybe. Okay. You're excited about it. Yes. Okay. Do you like teaching martial arts? Yes. Do you prefer teaching kids or grownups? That's an excellent, excellent question. Um, I'm in charge of the, uh, I was in charge of the young little kids and I really prefer the teenagers, to be honest with you. Um, I feel like we can nerd out and talk about anime and the kids in the teenage class, we'd like dress the same and it's funny. But then the little ones are like, he choked me. He wouldn't let go when I tap. Da, da, da. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so like, I'm getting a little uh, fed up with those guys, but they're so cute. You know, and they try really hard. But anyway, I like, I like all ages, but I prefer um, teenagers. <laughs> Interesting. So not quite the older guys, the ones in their twenties who want to be like pro fighters. 
kids in the 13, 14, 15, 16 range, that type of yeah. thing? That's interesting. Do, do you teach them in hopes that they catch the bug and become fighters, or do you have a different philosophy? Like you're trying to get them, you know, to be better at. Honestly, yeah. I think that all my students do not do MMA. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? It's really hard, and getting yeah. hit in the head is not fun and causes brain damage. So I hope they have a glorious jujitsu career. <laughs> okay. Will you compete in jujitsu post retirement? Absolutely. Okay. Like I did a couple of matches this past year and I don't regret doing them, but like, I feel like I wish I could have, you know, I wasn't able to train jujitsu twice a day, every day, like my opponents were probably doing. And, you know, like I'm looking forward to getting more into leg locks and like things like that, that I can't really focus on now. So I'm excited to do that. And I really hope any promoters out there hear this and would like to hire me. I'm going to call it Chell Sonnen. He should get you on submission uh, underground, right? Yeah, I did it once. So yeah. now I want to get back in more jujitsu and then I would love to be on that again. Okay. And will you follow MMA post retirement? Yes, of course. Um, more the girls and my friends, but you know what? Probably more than I do now because now I'm around it every day. Yeah. And like the last thing I'll do is go home and watch it after training. But if I'm not doing it every day, I'll probably be more into watching it, honestly. Right. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, and as far as like your health, your everyday life, you know, you mentioned the you know, the head trauma and whatnot, like, do you, do you, do you deal with that every day or do you feel like you are leaving relatively healthy? <laughs> I was thinking like, man, most people like they wake up in pain every day when they get old. Well, I've spent most of my youth like waking up in pain and then I'm going to get older and wake up in pain. But I guess that's the life that I chose. Um, I have my, I think, I think I'm going to escape without major brain injury. Thanks to these decisions. Um, I have a lot of, I have not a lot several things that are torn that can't grow back. So I'm sure I'm going to feel the consequences of those down the road and just little things here, but I'm going to here and there, but I'm going to try to stick with my trainer, Lorenzo, at least once a week and like try to stay strong and maybe even more than once. Cause all these jujitsu guys are bulking up now. So who knows? I'm going to, I think, you know, I got little stuff here and there, but for the most part, I'll be good with my brain. Do you have any regrets? Hmm. I have one regret actually. Um, the match that I mentioned, uh, Hashi, I hurt my knee. And then like that same day I got the fight offer to fight her. And I've been wanting that fight offer so badly. So I said, yes, figuring that my knee would heal, but it didn't. So I was like riding the bike for a month as my fight camp. And then I went in and I had a horrible fight and I was like afraid to step on my knee. So I regret taking the fight. Like I wish I had just, I was afraid I was never going to get another chance to fight her. So, I, so that's like the only regret I had. I was stupid. Like I shouldn't have taken that fight. Okay. Um, but other than that, like, I think I'm, I think I don't really regret anything. Okay. Um, last thing for you, Roxy, thank you as always for the time. When people talk about Roxanne Modafferi in 15, 20 years, what do you want them to say about you? What do you want your legacy to be in this sport? I would love for people to remember me as a martial artist, not like a brawler or a fighter, um, a martial artist who, you know, always does their best. And, you know, it's like the Power Ranger fights the bad guys, like just does their best and is a good martial artist. That's what I'd like. Dare I say a happy warrior. A happy warrior. Yes. Who gave you that nickname, by the way? Some guy on MySpace. Oh my and <laughs> if anyone out there, who, who actually gave me that name on MySpace is the guy, like, hit me up. Oh, my God. You know, God. I'm very curious who it is. I forgot who it is, and my MySpace account no longer exists. I was going to look it up, but that's thank you, fan on MySpace, like, two decades ago. Amazing. That's the kind of legend you are. A MySpace fan gave you this. I remember your journals on MySpace way back in the day. You used to write great yeah. stuff on my. I remember that. See, I've been around, too, and I remember that vividly. Uh, you have been a joy to cover, a joy to watch. You're, you are a true martial artist and you've done everything the right way. So congratulations on a fantastic career. And I look forward to the last one on February 12th, Roxy. Thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Ariel. All right. There she is, Roxanne Modafferi, kind enough to join us, one of the OGs of the game.